welcome, welcome, welcome. Sometimes the off-season is even better than the actual season. My name is Marco, this is the Bleed Big Blue Podcast, and let's kick off this show. James, would you like to introduce yourself? This is James, originally from New York, diehard Giants fan, Jimmy the Trifecta, right for uh, Bleed Big Blue, and love doing it. All right, Tim, what do you got? Yeah, this is Tim, uh, originally from New York, now I'm a Southern boy. Uh, <laughs> it's at, at T Merritt 51 Find me out. Are we getting Sue? I mean, come on. We need help on the line. What are you thinking? Sue? No Sue? All right. Then, yeah, I'll go with that one. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm torn with it, guys. I, I'm, would he make our team better? Absolutely. But he would kill our cap. So I'm going to have to say no Sue. Because, you know, when, like uh, we discussed prior we can get a guy like Nick Fairley or even like Terrence Knighton for half the price and then go get somebody, you know, and have money for depth around the rest of the team. While, you know, at this point, Sue, Sue would kill, you know, kill it for our defensive line, but we wouldn't have money for depth around the rest of the team. Well, allow me to retort. Uh, I have, uh, l- l- let me, let me start off by saying this. I don't think we're getting Sue. I don't. I, I think that when it comes down to it, I think he's going to look at the Raiders and how much money they can give him and be persuaded by the fact that they're moving to L.A. And I think, in the, I think he's going to go for the most money. The other thing is he could go to the Dolphins, no state tax. So th- there are obstacles in the way. However, you go back to September and you hear the rumors that he wanted to play in New York. I don't. This thing about the cap, I'm sorry. They got guys that, for a living, work there and figure out ways to maneuver around cap situations like this. I understand that right now we look against the cap, but you have to think that if the reports are out that they're going to go after Sue and that they're going to pursue him, that they're not going to insult him with an offer and that they have to think that there's a logical way they know what it's going to cost to bring them in, and they have to think that there's a logical way that they can continue. I mean, I read a report today that not only they were going to go after Sue, but they were going to go after McCourty. And I think a lot of us get caught up in the cap situation without thinking about, all right, well, if you tweak one one contract here and one, one contract there, all of a sudden the cap isn't looking that bad. So I, I don't think money is really going to play into a factor of it from the Giants' perspective. I think they're going to make him a legitimate offer. I think it comes down to, does Sue want to be the highest paid player in the league by a lot? Or does he want to be comparable to J.J. Watt and play in a market where he's going to have a chance to win a Super Bowl and where he's going to make a lot of money off the field? And I think that's, I I don't think that the money aspect of it really is going to hurt them too much. Right, right. I was listening to uh, Mark Cuban. I think he was on Colin Cowherd and he said, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, that all these players are their own brand now and the market doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where they're playing. I'm going to I'm gonna call bullshit. I think the market does matter. Let's look at Odell Beckham, rookie of the year, putting up crazy numbers all over the place, correct? Then you have Mike Evans, crazy numbers, out in Tampa Bay. No one really hears of him. I don't know if it's a New York bias, but... If Mike Evans was playing in New York, maybe he would have been the rookie of the year. The bigger markets are just able to push you. They get more media. There's more hype. Now, does he want to go for $20 million? Probably. So I, I agree think, with you. I, I see, and and, and that's the question is nobody knows what Sue's thinking. This is this is a guy who is he's a little eclectic. You know, he's out there a little bit. So you, you really don't know what he's thinking. Does he want to? I mean, you look at the teams that are that are being mentioned for him, and you're talking about the Dolphins, you're talking about Cleveland, you're talking about the Raiders, you're talking about the Jaguars. Does, does he want? Does he really want to go to a place like that? This is a guy that it, he's he's still young. He's 28 years old, but the window closes fast in this league. You know, does he want to be matched up with JPP and a, and, and Hankins and have Eli on the other side, a guy who's won two Super Bowls and possibly get a ring? Or is he going to go for the payday? And we're not going to know the truth until until Monday. But he, he's a guy that revamps everything. He changes 
everything in, 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 in reference to what this defense can do and what they can be. And, and if we're looking to get back to the top, this is the guy on the market that can get us there the quickest. And as you guys both know, so, Tim, Marco, the window's closing on Eli. It's getting time to uh, to win another one. Oh, without a doubt. But here, here's the issues that I, I, I see with that. So let, let's say we get Sue. We're going to have to pay like $100 million, whatever. You yeah. Know. So right. We get Sue. Now we got to pay JPP. And he just saw what we paid Sue. Technically, you don't, though. Technically, well, you don't, though. You can let him play the, out the final year of his contract and let him walk. Yeah, you are, are you willing to? Okay, so th- that brings me into another question then. So who would you rather have, JPP or Sue? Sue, without a doubt. Give yeah. me Sue every day of the week, twice on Sunday. I don't see Sue posting Facebook videos. You know what I see Sue doing? Beating the shit out of everyone in front of him. And I'm sorry, JPP at the end of the year, maybe he got healthy. Yeah, 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 great, great, great. Where was he in the beginning of the season? Where was he until he realized his contract was going up and there was nothing to play for? If I'm going to invest $100 million in a player, there's not a doubt in my mind it would be to sue before JPP. Without a doubt. Right. Sue doesn't miss any games. JPP, he, he was hurt. He's had injuries the last two years. Where's the guy? If you're talking about JPP 2011, I give him $100 million, and I say, Sue, don't worry about it. Take it easy. I'll build my defense around JPP. But that guy hasn't been here. Right. Since we're on JPP, what do you think? $15 million per year, franchise. What's the long-term contract? Tim, you want At this point, <laughs> I, I'm, I'll, I'll start it with you because you I already know what your answer is. Go ahead, man. Um, yeah. is, well, one, we still got to remember, he's still 26 years old. And, you know, he was still learning the game. He was raw as hell when we drafted him. That's true. Can, can, is, he, uh, is he worth the money as a top defensive end? Yeah, but who – I would say who, who are you comparing him to? Yeah. I, I mean, mean that's, that's – yeah, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. What I'm going to say is that if you look at Sue – and right, guys, give me uh, – who, who's the guy on the, on the Rams? The, the Quinn. Quinn, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 the guy on and and Houston on on Kansas City. Now look at the watch those guys play, and then tell me that JP and and I like JPP. I'm not saying that he's a bad player. I think he's a good player. But yeah. is he with those guys? Is he in the same ballpark as those two players? Do you really want to pay him I, thirteen million a year? I wouldn't say he's in the same ballpark, but I wouldn't say he's that far uh, that far of a drop. You think and he has a cap, and we saw the capability that he does have. He's not in the ballpark. He's in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's right there, almost there. Yeah, he's like he's like not exactly an average. He's better than an average player. He's a very he plays the run very well. I know the Giants go by these PFF rankings a lot, and PFF he he was ranked pretty well. I mean, he had a good season. No, I'm not trying to say it, it's. And the market value, everybody's going to pay over for a pass rusher. Everybody, they're going to see a pass rusher at 26 years old. But we've watched him every week, guys. We've seen him since 2011. And I don't see the same guy. I don't see the same fire. Even the, the, at the close of the, the year last year, he's not a guy. He was flying around the field in 2011. And I, I, I don't know if you're paying for the guy who just wants a big contract or if you're paying for... 2011 Sue. If you're paying 2000, I'm sorry, 2011 JPP. If you're paying for yeah. him, I'm all for it. Right. Oh yeah, I, I, and I'm with you, and I, and I'm I'm leery as well. I'm I'm worried about the same thing. You give him a long term contract that he doesn't care anymore. That you know, or you know, it, it's the back issues come back up again. And back and dude, you know, and, and a back issue is th- those are going to linger. And the older he gets. All it takes is one bad one, and you're looking at, you know, now you're looking at a wasted investment. So would I look to sign him? Yeah, I mean, I'd look to sign him long term, if you, especially if you're going to get Sue, if you're going to make a run for Sue. And even if you don't, I'd look to sign him long term. But if he wants $14, $13, 14000000 $15 million a year, I might let him play this season under the tag, see what I got, and then revisit that. Show me you can earn it for a full 16 games before we give it to you. Oh, I agree. I, I agree with you. All right. So, what do you guys think are some looming cuts around the corner? 
Uh, they let Jordan, uh, Jarrell Jernigan go today. Walt in the Good. NBA. Good. <laughs> John Beeson is, is currently restructuring. It looks like they're not really talking to Andrew Rowe at this moment. What's the uh, what's the next player to go? What's the next player to restructure? As far as players restructure, I got to get... Well, Beeson, Beeson, they're already talking to. I think the biggest thing that that's just taking longer because he's his own agent. You know, it, it's 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 hard to call somebody an asshole to their face. <laughs> you know, his own agent. that's right. <laughs> and, and you know, and that's what take that's what took longer to get a long term contract last year. You know, just because he's his own agent, but he's he already said he's willing to restructure. He, and I give him credit because he goes like, uh, "Giants gave me a chance when everybody else thought I was done." So he's willing to take the cut. So great, you know. Hopefully, we get the beast in that happen. You know, came a couple years ago. Yeah, I think Beeson's as as... important. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. an important part. I think I think with, with Beeson taking a pay cut, and, and I think this is this is a lot of the chips are going to fall as different things happen. You know, I think if they make a huge offer to Sue and he accepts the contract, well, now you're in a position where you have to restructure guys, and maybe you let a McLean go. And maybe you go to Eli for an extension, or you go to Cruz or Beatty to restructure a contract, or Weatherford. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think w- without if if they don't sign Sue and if they don't make a big splash in free agency, you can very easily let them see Eli play out the rest of his contract. So I I, I think right now is it, I didn't see the Jernigan cut coming. I thought they'd at least bring him to camp. Uh, I, they're not going to bring back Williams. It looks like they're looking to do a complete 180 on this defense. Well, as far as Jernigan, I'm not a fan. I, I, well, I think he's, he's, played a total of, he's played a total of maybe five good games in his whole Giants career. Yeah. I thought they'd bring him back for a body. I didn't think that he'd make the team or have any significance, but I figured he's under contract and he's cheap. He knows the offense, So, but it's, I'm not losing sleep over it by any means. But, uh, I mean, who oh, yeah, knows? Without that? I, mean, I think they just put a restriction on Fenner. For a corner, so I I think that you know they're, they're, we're in for a lot of surprises come Monday, and I I mean I wouldn't be surprised to see anybody go, and I wouldn't be surprised to see anybody come in at this point. I, I think all bets are off. I think they know that jobs are on the line, and they're they're going to have to do some pretty impressive things in the next ninety days between now and the draft to really you know solidify a lot of needs on this team. Yeah, and you bring you bring it. You bring a good point up is, you know, they, they uh, gave the tender the Brown and Fenner. Yeah. And all reports we, we've been seeing, Thurman thinking he's worth more money for uh, after playing only a game. And he, well, I, think he's, gonna he's, a big, I think you're going to see a big movement on this defense to get younger. I, I, I don't think they're going to bring Roll back. I don't think they're interested in Cofield or Canty or any of the retreads. I think they know they have to get younger. And I, I think you're I, – I'm telling you guys, I got a feeling, and I'm not saying they get them, but I think we're going to be very surprised of what they offer Sue and McCourty because we don't see the money now. But I think they know that if they can get these guys to sign on the dotted line, that they then have options to do a lot of different things to free the money up. But if there's not a reason to do so, you know what I'm saying? Then, then why do it? Yeah. With you on that. that, that's a, that's a great point. As far as that, it was like, hey, we don't we don't have to restructure the contracts. We don't have to extend anybody out. We're not going to. But, but let's put it this way: Giants were also back in the day. They were also in, in on the Hainsworth. Yeah. You know, kind of, you know, they they offered them twenty million less than what Washington did. Thank God. But, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank God. Absolutely. It and Proper if you remember value. that year, Tim, if you remember that year, they were up against it cap wise. They didn't have a lot of money, and out of nowhere, they offered Hainsworth eighty million dollars. And you're talking about Hainsworth, a guy who's—I I wouldn't put him in the same category as Sue, but a guy with the same temperament as Sue. And if you think back then, that was when maybe the defense needed a little something extra. Maybe there was something missing a little bit, and they needed to make a splash, and they wanted to maybe redo the thinking on this defense to a more aggressive, nasty type defense. And you look at this guy and he's, he's Hainsworth times five, man, because he has a motor and he plays hard. He's Hainsworth. You know, Hainsworth was a, 
a flash in the pan. This guy's the real deal. You know who I think oh, running, I, I'm with you. running under the radar? Why don't we lock up Prince? We could restructure him. I, you Get know what? I think that's he's a good. Not a, I, he's not. That's a, a great idea. Corner, but he's a damn good corner, and he's still he's oh. still getting young. He's once in a while he gets a little nag and injuries, but they but don't come Marco, around. I often. think I think that's a great point, and I think they could potentially do that. But the thing with Prince is, it, it, and, and it's like I was saying before, is if you don't have to touch this now, because here's a guy that Prince, for all his talent and all his capabilities, gets hurt a lot. So if you're looking at one year for $7 million for this guy and you don't have to touch that deal and you could say, you know what, let me see what this guy gives me for a full 16 before I invest another five years in him and, and play well, a you're, also, you're also gambling with that, that. You're gambling because let's say Prince has a great year, you know, all pro year. Then we're paying out the ass what, what money we want to pay. Him. You could franchise True. him. Oh, I, I agree with that. And you, I mean, I'm saying we would lose them. I'm just saying, instead of paying them, you know, whatever, you know, you know, five years, 30 million, we're paying them, you know, five years, you know, 50 million. Yeah. It, it's, it's a huge roll of the dice, but you're also looking at where if they sign Sue, they may have to extend Prince. So they may be mm -hmm. looking at this now saying, they may be looking at this now saying, Hey, you know what? Let's just let's go after who we want, and if we are, we can make them any offer we want, and then it's on us to get under the cap. And they may be looking at this and saying, "Let's go after what we need to go after, and work it out later," because they have a ton of different options. Prince, Eli, they have a ton of different options to work it out later. And a quick, you know, a quick tidbit on that: Prince is the key to Sue, or he's one of them. Play with him in college. Prince is already pushing for Sue to come. No, I agree with yeah. That's I think that'll play a little bit. Of, I think that could play a little bit of a factor. I mean, I think that and they were close because I, I I follow Nebraska. I'm actually a Nebraska fan. For, I, I, don't ask me how I liked fucking Tom Osborne and Lawrence Phillips when I was like 15, <laughs> 16 years old. But uh, I I think that that could play a little bit of a factor. But I, I again, it's gonna. I think the Giants are gonna make a really legit offer, but. You know, Oakland and Jaguars, these guys can open the bank and offer him something ridiculous. And then it's really, what does Sue want? And nobody knows that right now. Has anyone seen the posters going up with Sue with the dollar sign, UH, all over Detroit? They they think he's going to bounce. So I think I think PR-wise, he's going to take a little bit of a hit. Eh, you know, everybody, you know, nowadays with these guys, how many guys do we see leave teams, man? Yeah. I mean... I, if if Peyton can get cut and end up in Denver, then they could take losing Sue. Their Detroit's just bitter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, NFL players, you can't blame any NFL player for taking the most money they possibly can get. Nope, because it could be a it's one year contract. Yeah, basically, it's a one it's a it's a one play contract. <laughs> when you think about these, exactly. these guys, can you get hit the wrong way one time and it's done? And I don't blame any one of them. I don't blame Sue. If if Sue says I'm going to go play in Jacksonville, and for no state tax, and take 110 or 112 million over seven years, God bless him. The reports are Miami. That's where the reports are. Yeah, I yeah. read. I read this morning that uh, the Raiders are going to focus elsewhere. They're going to go after him secondarily. They're not going to. Then he's not going to be their primary focus. I heard the Raiders were his first trip. I heard, I, I heard the first. I heard the first I've also heard the rumors. Yeah, I've also heard the rumors that my whatever reason Miami's the favorite, mm -hmm. which you know the no no state tax that yeah. obviously plays to it. South Beach, I mean, it's attractive. It's attractive right now. I'm looking at two feet of snow over here. <laughs> you ain't you ain't lying, my friend. All right, so. What do you think the mo the position of most need is? Do you think do you think it's the offensive line? Do you think it's the de defensive line that we probably spent the last twenty minutes on? Safety, running game. What do you think? Where, you're the GM. Where are we going with this? As far as most need, I I gotta say D tackle. Hmm. It, it it's this hard. It's don't it's disheartening to see 
teams run, run all over us all season long. And you, you need somebody next to Hankins to just stuff that line. Hmm. And not only stuff the line, but take these linemen off the linebackers so they can actually make plays. I, uh, in my heart, I agree with you, Tim, but just to be a dick, I'm going to go the other way just for argument's sake. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with safety. Just because I, I, I think that, I, I think with, with, with the, with how much teams throw the ball now, and, and, and this is taken into consideration that we do have Hankins and JPP on the line as well. You know, so, I mean, I think if we went your way, if we didn't get Sue and we ended up with a fair lead to pair him with Hankins and, and mm-hmm. invested in other positions and ended up bringing in a McCourty, I think you need a playmaker back there. I think you need a guy that can get sideline to sideline and really be a threat to pick the ball and maintain the middle of that field. I, I, I think that that... that you know, with the other pieces they have, I would say safety. Now, that being said, going back to uh, Mr. Sue, I think Sue solves a lot of that problem because if you put him next to Hankins and JPP, now all of a sudden, you know, your secondary looks a lot better because the quarterback doesn't have a lot of time to throw the ball. And if you're bringing back Prince and DRC, you, you know, uh, th- there's talent. It's not like there's no talent back there. So, I would say safety just based on the roster right now, but oh yeah, and I'm with you. I'm let's put this way. I'm playing my side right have now. The most impact. Uh, I agree with Devin you there. Definitely recording some nice. <laughs> None of the words on the offensive line. No, I don't think I, the offensive I'm, line. I'll tell you the truth. I, I'm okay with the offensive line. I I think that they need a piece, but I think that that piece could be a big piece. Or a little piece, because I think you could bring in a, a, a solid right guard for three to four million a year and plug him in next to Pew or move Pew inside and spend five to six million on a tackle and bring a guy in here and solidify that. But I, I think you could also use a second and third round pick. This draft is deep on linemen. Um, so I think you could also replenish through the draft and bring some bodies in there with some potential. But uh I mean, offensive line, you, know you got four of your five starters locked in. You just don't know if Pew's going to be a guard or a tackle. Well, that's, that's, I'm with you exactly, James. That's where I'm exactly what I'm saying. We got a deep draft. If We're going we're gonna to grab one, regardless of what happens. But it's going to grab depth. We're going to grab a free agent. Yeah. Now, you know, if it's a guard or a tackle, whatever. As long as somebody plug in. The one thing that people forget is, Schwartz didn't even play pretty much last year. Yeah. He played one game. You, you you plug him in at left guard. You got Richburg playing at center is natural position anyway. And if you look at the stats, they were in the middle of the league giving up sacks. Now, could they help? They need better uh, run blocking? Absolutely. Yeah. But, but I, I, think, it was, I, think I, I, I think that'll come. I, I think if you bring in... If you bring in a, a solid veteran right tackle or a solid veteran right guard, I think they can go either way. I'm okay with Pew at right tackle, and I'm okay with Pew at right guard. I don't think Pew – I think if the line's playing well, Pew will be just fine. He's motivated. He wants to be the right tackle. Uh, you know, he, you drafted him in the first damn round. I mean, uh, so – Let's put this way. He played he great. the opportunity going into his third year to be the right tackle, but I think they can go either way, and I think as long as that piece is a starting caliber piece – where, where it's a person where either via the draft, like a Richburg last year in the second round, or via free agency, a guy that you could plug in right away and say, okay, we're set. Then I, I, I think the offensive line could potentially be a strength by week five or six come, uh, come yeah. next year. The guy they keep uh, talking about and pumping up that Giants want is that uh, Clint Boiling from uh, Cincinnati. He played guard and tackle over there. I saw, cheap, I, saw, uh, I saw, I saw, I uh, saw you guys would get a kit here. This is funny. I, if my phone wasn't a piece of shit, I would bring it up. But I had a, I, I was on a ESPN today and Mike Mel Kuyper, actually his recent draft, right? He has Cooper on the board at nine and the Giants taking the, the tackle from Miami? What is it, Petey? Or no, they had, yeah, they had Pete, uh, the guy from Stanford. Yeah, they, they got him taking him at nine, and then Cooper going 10 to the Rams. And I almost threw my phone across the room. 
<laughs> these, well, these mocks, the paper's the, horrible. The mock draft drives me crazy. Why does a guy get like 20 shots at making his mock draft? Every, <laughs> every two weeks he changes it. So like, you're obviously going to get one right. Oh, I called it from the beginning. No, you change it 85 times throughout the whole yeah. year. <laughs> oh, Kuiper's Kuiper's horrible. First of all, after you know the allegations as he was pumping up draft picks because he was getting paid by agents, you know, just by pumping up their name to all their top of the board kind of stuff. I, I don't I don't listen to Mel. I will, I, like, I will uh, tell you one. I will tell you one thing on the draft. I saw today that Ron Jaworski came out and said um, something about Jameis Winston. Yeah, no not Winston. having mechanics or anything. That means that Jameis yeah. Winston is going to be fucking phenomenal, and they should take him with the first pick in Tampa Bay because everything that Jaworski says is dead wrong. The guy is a complete retarded person. I can't stand him. <laughs> Oh, uh, what you know? What I, I'm, I like Winston. I like the way he plays. He, he yeah, reminds I, me of I like think Winston's one of those guys that you just put him on the field and and he and he makes plays. He's a winner. You know, I mean, he, I, he, I, I, I think like Roethlisberger, Cole, Cole Pepper mix. You know, a lot of a lot of people get caught up. A lot of people get caught up in the combine and how far they could throw. And, and I, I'm more of a like I watch the combine and I'm like, oh yeah, that's great and and wow, that was pretty cool, but. When it comes down to it, if you're watching the games on Saturday and you're watching the highlights and paying attention during the college football season, you know which guys could play and which guys can't play and which guys are going to make it on the next level and which guys aren't going to make it on the next level. And I'm all about watching them play on the field. And when you watch Winston play on the field, he's impressive. The guy makes plays. He's, He's tough. Too bad he looked like Jamarcus Russell during the, uh, during the combine. That guy blew up. <laughs> he did. He looked like CC Sabathia. That's that's not a red flag. <laughs> well, I don't, see, I don't it's give a take to run around. I don't want my quarterback <laughs> running around. I want my quarterback <laughs> in the fucking pocket, not getting hit, getting rid of the ball quick, and staying on the field. I don't want him running around. If he weighs 280 and he could sling it and lead a two-minute drive, I don't give a shit what he weighs. He could weigh 350. Give me other Lorenz. Bring in Lorenz. <laughs> to be fair, well, first of all, that picture that you know Winston was out with when he was a little fat ass, that was a uh, that was a while, or like a month back or something like that. He lost all that weight, and actually, he weighed exactly the same Mariota as Mariota. And they were like almost exact heights and weight. I, I, I think I think Mariota's gonna go first. I think. Did you hear about that trade? Yeah, the Eagles trading up. Did you? Do you? That has to be bullshit, right? I mean, I, I hope Philly does that. I hope Philly does. That. I pray that they do that. I mean, for as much as I wouldn't want Michael Evans in the division, I mean, I, you're giving up your your future. I don't well, know. This, I, you know what? Just so since we brought up the Eagles, I want to I want to thank them for uh, taking Lashawn McCoy out of the division. I appreciate that. Yes, thank you, Eagles. Thank you, Eagle fans. I th- <laughs> see. See, you guys, you guys are gonna hate me. I think we. I, I'm pissed that that trade went through. I'm pissed because oh, what you worry about. No, I, I don't give a shit about McCoy. McCoy's a running back at 27 years old that is going to start slowing down soon and is killing them on the cap. They That's how I see McCoy. And, that, and they get rid of McCoy, they bring in Alonzo. If Alonzo is healthy, you guys are going to fucking hate Kiki Alonzo because Kiki Alonzo is ridiculous. That kid is a beast. He is a football player. And yeah. what they're going to do with the other... $10 million that they're saving because Alonzo's only making 900000 is they're going to bring in possibly McCourty or possibly you know a, a handful of other guys that can help them out. I mean, they also got rid of Trent Cole. How badass would it be to see us go after Trent Cole, by the way? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that one. You know what? I almost want Graham more than I want Cole, just age-wise. Cole's yeah. up there. Yeah. Cole's a player, though, isn't he? Cole's just the, oh, yeah. one of those guys that you're afraid playing against them. Well, the, the, Philly cleared house. All the guys that used to piss me off when you know they're playing the Giants are gone. 
Yeah, I don't have to worry about McCoy. Too. I don't worry about your three cool. You don't have to worry about any of them. And if they want to play the damn college offense, you know, hopefully we get uh, some defensive linemen that could blow up, uh, you know, blow up the middle so they can't do the, the garbage they were doing last year and pretty much well, what everybody what? else did to us. I saw somebody say that, that they were clearing out money, that the Eagles were clearing out money to go after Sue. And I said, Sue's not going to fucking, he's not, he's not going to Philadelphia. Who wants to play on that defense? You, you're on the yeah. field all day long. Exactly. Uh, it's not very attractive. So, you know, I, it's, it's interesting to see if, you know, if guys, if that would affect guys. Because if I'm, if I'm a courty, and I'm looking at the Giants, and I'm looking at the Eagles right now. Uh, the Giants are a lot more attractive to me, and then it's just based on the money. I mean, be, you know, Jersey kid, Rockland County, New York, right? Went to school at Rutgers, yeah. 40. I mean, it, it fits perfect if the Giants are willing to pay them. Uh, I, I don't want to my... end up in Philadelphia. I'm planting my flag, like I said. I want, I want McCourty bad. That's who I want. I want Giants to go out and go get them. We need, we need them. Dream. I'm going for. I want Sue. I think they got a <laughs> shot. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a schmuck. I, 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 I think they got a, I think they got a really legit shot, and they're going to surprise people with the offer. I think if if they're being mentioned in this thing, you would think that that they have a plan. That they're just a little smarter than the Raiders and the Jaguars, and you know that they have a way to make this work if they're even being mentioned. You I'm fired up, guys. You know is it, is it Monday yet? <laughs> I have the best defensive player, Amari Cooper, because who cares when you're putting up 80 points a game? Who cares? <laughs> There's no way you put Cruz, Cooper, Beckham, and Randall on a four wide receiver set. Come on. Come on. Well, look. Let's just let's just knock on wood and hope Cruz comes back to what he was. Yeah, that I, that I, I'm, it scares no, no, me. Guys, guys, it was confirmed. I checked Victor Cruz's uh, Twitter profile and he said, "Yeah, no, it's not a problem. He's back." <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's the deal with the, the Cruz thing. It, you know what it reminds me of? Steve Smith. That's who, what it reminds me of. He was tearing it up for us for a while. Add that knee injury, done. Career done. You know, that's what, you know yeah, go ahead. I think the Steve Smith was he came back too early. And he was in the he was negotiating his contract. that was a contract year that he got injured too. Yep. And well he went to Philly and you know what? That's what you get. Yeah, he went to Philly and he's like, I don't even like it here. Why am I here? <laughs> Cruz. So, so not I, I, I think draft. I think Cruz I think Cruz is the reason you take Cooper. I, I think oh, yeah, I'm, I'm Cruz working. is such a question mark that if Cooper is if some if somehow the other eight GMs were stupid enough to let Cooper fall to nine, uh, you know, you got to take him. Say say Cooper say Cooper goes for. Sorry about that. You heard mm-hmm. that. What happened? You heard that? No. Oh, I hit a button and sound effect went off. Say <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Say uh, say Cooper has gone with the Raiders at four, and White is available at nine. Do you substitute White for Cooper? Absolutely. Who's there, there offensive line wise? I I'm, I'm I don't know. I don't see- Offensive alignment that are top ten. Hmm. And what's that other Beckham? Oh, the Dorel Green Beckham. Yeah, Oklahoma. He's a he's huge. Yeah, he's like he just, six, he's, right? Six five. Yeah, and he just uh, you know, he's got uh, some background stuff that you know could be an issue, and Giants usually uh fade away from that stuff. Yeah, I'd be shocked if they touch that kid. I think he could be a hell of a player. I think he could be a hell of a player, just physically. Yep. We we already tried the Ramsey's uh, the uh, Plaxico lookalike with Ramsey's, and he had one good game in four years. <laughs> Very true. 
Very true. I saw. Uh, you guys ever see um, JB Smooth's Four Courses? It's on MSG. Couple of times. They had Plaxico on two weeks ago, and I was. Man. He shot something. himself in the leg and went to jail for two years and killed him back to back. He killed the back to back. Yep. They, they, they would have they won the whole goddamn thing that year. I'm sorry. They were the yeah, best team they in the were, league. They were tearing it. Yeah, they were tearing it up. They were the best uh, team just, in the league that year. That was he the was, most dominant Giants team I, I think I've ever seen, honestly. Well, I remember 86, that stretch in 86 with that defense. They struggled offensively in 86. But that was the first season, guys, that I like really remember. I was nine years old, and I remember sitting down and watching those games. And that team was pretty badass, man. They, that 86 team was phenomenal. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I, the, but the, you're right. That if Plaxico doesn't go down, they could be looking at 14 and two, 15 and one, and possibly you know another Super Bowl. They were the best team in the league that year with Plaxico. Um, no doubt whatsoever. I uh, that, that that pissed me off that year so bad. Oh, oh God, this making me mad now. Yeah, I get a little fucking pissed just thinking about it. <laughs> Even after all that, I I, I still got a uh, still got a soft spot. And he, he, when he was wide open in the end zone, I was like, "You have to be kidding me!" I don't have a soft spot. I don't have any soft spots. Let me be the dick again. Screw Plaxico Burris. <laughs> Screw him. What an idiot! I, I, How do you, what an idiot! How do you take a gun in a club? You're what do you? <laughs> You're a moron. What are you doing? You're ten and zero. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh god. No, no he, so put, he put it in his waistband though. That's fine. Oh. <laughs> like, that's where you hold it. You, you fruit of the loom waistband. Those shits are tight. What are you right? doing? That's why you have bodyguards. <laughs> they have the guns. Stupid. Oh. Uh. It was the whole thing that year, guys. Who brought this up? Who brought Plaxico up? I did. I miss him. I miss him. <laughs> uh, you, you know, he threw off the everything. So all I'm doing is thinking how pissed I was when that happened. Seeing that oh. going across ESPN, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I've smoked three cigarettes since you mentioned his name. <laughs> all right, all right I'll, I'll bring up another name from the past. I think we should have went Pepper Johnson. How about that? I'm, I, uh, you know, it's, we- it's I, weird. I, 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 it's not that I don't like Spags. I like Spags. I'm happy that we got Spags. But I, I would have rather too. Pepper Johnson. I, I can't believe they didn't offer him something. <sighs> I, I'm, I was with you. It's like, uh, you know, and I, I was living in Buffalo for a while, so... Uh, you know, I keep an eye on the Bills too, and you know he was he was tearing. You know, he was doing a good job for the coaching them. He was under Belichick for years. You know, it would have been nice to see what he could do, but you knew he, Coughlin was going to go with Spagnola. Yeah, he already, he already worked. He already worked under him, and if Tom, Tom's like, I'm not going to, you know, deal with some young kid trying to be a head coach, when I know Spagnola is pretty much going to be there now. He already ruined his head coaching shot. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. I think he knows he won a championship with Spagnuolo. The other thing is, it, it, from reading, you know, <clears throat> these different articles and stuff, you see that Spagnolo went and sat down with Urban Meyer and a bunch of different college coaches, and yep. really got a different perspective on how to stop like this read option and deal with it. And supposedly, when he went into the interview, the defense that he presented was entirely not well not entirely different but there were a lot of different aspects of the defense that he presented and it really impressed Coughlin and and I mean I don't know I I think that it had a lot to do with the comfort of Spagnolo and knowing him I but I think when Pepper does get his shot he's going to be impressive because I just think he relates to the guys he just I remember when he was playing he was always rallying the troops and, and getting guys fired up. And I, and I think that, you know, he's on the field. He's in it. He's with the guys. He's engaged. And I think they're receptive to him. 
and he, he he gets a lot of performance out of the guys that he's coaching, as you see wherever he goes in New England and uh, in, in Buffalo with the defensive line. They had three All Pro guys on that line this year, so I think when he gets his shot, he's going to do well. But uh, hopefully, it's not in the NFC. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. Now, what, what do we do with Tom's contract? Yes, but you know what? So, you know, oh. just, just Tom's. Yeah, you, you knew he was going to get extension. He's not, the Giants are going to give him a lame duck here. You know, it's, he's going to have one year, and that's all he's got is this week, this year. He doesn't make playoffs this year. Sorry, Tom. It's time to move on. Hundred percent agreed. I, I think that you know. I mean, I think that if he, I think here's what I think. I think if he pulls some shit out of his hat this year. He's going to be around till he's seventy, okay. But if he doesn't succeed this year, I think I think this is it, and I think that they don't want him to go in as a lame duck. They never do, just like you said. Um, I, you know, I, I'm happy that they brought him back. I, I was against it midway through last year, and as the season progressed, and seeing what Beckham did to the team, and and seeing, you know, how the offense was coming along, I figured, you know what, with all the injuries they had, let, let's go another year with Tom. And that's why I think they're going to all in, guys, on, on on these free agents, because I think they know that it's win now or win, you know, six years from now because it's going to be a complete rebuilding process. And I think they want to get, you know, load this team up for a run where if Tom shows that he get to the NFC divisional playoff game and get to the NFC championship game that they can bring him back and be confident that with that nucleus, he can go back and win another Super Bowl in the next three to four years. But I think it all hinges on this season, like you said, Tim. Yeah. Well, without a doubt. I, Tom, the, the one thing that, that I saw last year, and I was with you, I was like, just, just fire on, let's, get, let's move on and change it up. But uh, you know what? Now, one that one guy was bad mouthing Tom throughout, you know, even as crappy as they were, no one was bad mouthing him in the press. Everybody was kept backing him up. I was like, all right, that says something. Because you know, in, in other, you know, in other years, that wasn't the case. That whether it was Jim Fossil, God knows the Ray Hanley years. Not yet. He you didn't. Know. He didn't. He didn't lose the locker room. He he gained a lot of support as the season went along, and that's why. And, and when I look at this, you know, you look at the the offense with Beckham now and this new offense, I I, mean, I don't know about you guys, but I, and, and Marco knows this because, you know, we have, you know, I've been writing uh, for the site, you know, since uh, last year and or two, two seasons now. And Marco, you know that I've always been shaky on Eli and I'm one to say, hey, if we can get rid of him for something better or a first round pick or something like that. You know, maybe with this contract, you know, is he really worth it? From what I saw last year in this new offense, I'm willing to invest the next six seasons in Eli Manning and let him playing out his contract to see where this offense can go and how good he can be in it with a Beckham and a healthy Cruz and maybe a Cooper or, or Randall coming along and give him that next little push to the second half of his career because – I think Beckham's enough to bring him along for the next four seasons by himself. The one thing to back up Eli, and I'm an Eli backer, and I gotta, I gotta argue with people all the time about Eli. You gotta say, first of all, Kevin Gilbride, his offense was based on the quarterback and the receivers reading the same thing, and it was option routes. When we kept on losing receivers like Nicks or you know Randall's running the damn wrong route. Because he does it every damn time, anyway. Mm-hmm. You know that's where half, that's where half of Eli's interceptions are coming from. E- Eli probably knows where they're supposed to be. He'll, he'll take the blame for it, but he, you know, that's they're you know they're throwing uh, across the middle. Guy didn't see it, doesn't see what the route was, and he he stops. Yeah, and Eli's not going to throw anybody under the bus. He's a stand-up dude. He's going to say, you know, he's going to do what a quarterback should do. He's going to come out and say, you know, we'll look at it on film, and I need to know not to, you know, throw the ball like that. And he's going to, you know, never throw anybody under the bus. And I, you, you got to love a guy like that, dude. And, and but 
there were times over the last couple of seasons, and I think you guys would agree, where sometimes we would just be scratching our heads. And, you know, I, I, to, to pay a scratch-in-your-head type of guy 17 to $19 million a season, you know, at that point, you're like, well, wait a minute, what, what's going on here? And now to see his improvement with this new offense, more completions, um, higher completion percentage, touchdown to interception ratio was phenomenal this year. He took care of the ball, was smart, made plays, was accurate. Big, he, he played, Eli played great, if you go back and look, considering what oh, yeah. the line was and where they came along. I, I'm excited to see where he can go with this offense. Without a doubt, he if you, even the interceptions. He if it wasn't for the one game where he had five, you're right. You know, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's half his interceptions. And that's just Eli. And you're gonna get one of those games. But you know what? That was Favre. You know what? That would if that's Peyton every now and again. He throws four. Sometimes these guys have bad games, and it is what it is. You know. And, and I think Eli's under the microscope because he's in New York. It's 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 little Manning. But, you know, when you look at his numbers and what he's done over the last decade, he's right there. He's right there with all these guys, especially with the rings. Well, and, and this thing, guys, I'm not looking forward to the, the time when uh, Eli's gone because I don't know who the hell, you know, who the hell would come in. NASA! <laughs> you could say the same about Tom Coughlin. Who, who's out there? Are you going to take a guy Coward. who's been in the booth for the last 10 years? I'll take Cower. Oh, Cower is rejuvenated Cower to replace Coughlin. Rejuvenated. Sooner or later, Coughlin's going to go, and it's going to be. I mean, now, I mean, with Spags there now, you can see maybe Spags getting another shot with them. They do like Spags. We've heard a lot about uh, McAdoo. You know, they, yeah. they like him a lot. Who knows that maybe they give him a shot? But if you're looking outside. Uh, you would have to say the most attractive guy, unless you're going to go college. And you guys, I don't want to go college. I don't want a college coach. Mm. I would say, I would say, Cower is the most attractive guy, right? Gruden. Cower. I would rather have Gruden over Cower. Really? I don't know. Cower's been out of the game long enough. And at least you know what? I know Gruden's doing the film study. Regardless, I don't know if Cower's doing any of it. You guys think Gruden? I think Gruden loves what he's doing. I don't think Gruden's ever coming back. No, I don't think either one are ever going to come back. Or, you know, maybe both of them been sitting on waiting for the Giants job because every coach wants a Giants job because we don't get rid of people. You know, it's funny that you said – it's funny that you say that, Tim, because from what I was reading a couple years ago uh, when when, uh, Coughlin was on the hot seat and Cowher's name did come up was that – Cower actually very quietly, and I think even didn't Jerome Bettis say it yeah. that he's very quietly waiting for the for the Giants job to open because one they have a very good quarterback and two um, he has a very close relationship with the Roonies from Pittsburgh who are extremely close with the Maras and uh, that he would really entertain the thought of coming back to the Giants because of that relationship. So it's funny that you said that because that's that's what leads me to believe that Cower may have a shot or may come back to us in the right situation. How long has Cower been out? I mean, it was, it's been close to like ten years at this point, right? I don't know if it, yeah, it, it, I, has it been ten. Has it really been ten years? It could be. It might be. Well, Google it. <laughs> What's that Google? I was a piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, think about how long. How long's Tomlin, Mike Tomlin, been there? He's been there, you know. Quite a- I think it's a little less than a decade because Tomlin took over after Cower, right? Wasn't it? Probably like I seven think, years. Is he right? going into his eighth or ninth year now, Tomlin? He's got to be around there. Got to yeah. be eight. It got to be eight to nine seasons, I would think. I don't know if it's ten. Maybe it is. Who knows? Only if we would have a way to look it up. I would do it on my phone right now, but geez, I, I, I can't stand it. I want to throw it against the wall. It's not working at all. I have my daughter's pink, pink phone, but I have no clue how to work this thing. I don't I don't think I could picture a Giants team without, like, Tom Coughlin's windburn face, sweating, palpitations. I mean, that's part of the show, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love no, nothing's better than... 
Sooner or later, <laughs> this thing is going to end. Maybe not in our lifetime, because Coughlin's unbelievable, but sooner or later, it's going to end. I, it, from what I've seen, Giants will have their pick of whoever the hell they want when they actually does when they actually do get the chance. Yeah, it's an attractive job. They will. They just gotta hope that that they just gotta hope that the time to let Coughlin go, that there's a lot of good candidates on the outside, unless they are very content just hiring within and staying and giving it to Spags or. Maybe Matt can do a press, impress them that much, like reports are that they, you know, there's a lot of people that think that McAdoo is a, sort of a head coach in training. And now it's interesting with Spags coming back because you got two guys that you can honestly make a case for if Coughlin lasts another season. If the offense produces, you want to let McAdoo just walk away? Okay. Well, I got to come back for yeah. you. Are you ready? I'll give you three names. You tell me who's most likely to come back. You already know who I'm going to say. Shoot. Canty, OC, or Cofield? Who comes back? Uh, it's, Cof- it's Cofield if, uh, out of those three. O- OC burned his bridge. As much as it'd be cool to have him back just for, uh, you know, passing downs and get a little nostalgic, but uh, I don't think it'd be worth it. And Canty, I like Canty, but he's another one. He's up there in age. I think Cofield's the youngest one out of all of them. Let me let me go on the record as saying I don't want any one of these three back whatsoever. But if you I agree with my, well. if you if you got a gun to my head and you're telling me I need to pick one, I depending on what the money's going to be. If I had to offer one money, if you're telling me that I had my if three guys are lined up in front of me saying. All right, whatever you offer me, I'm taking. It is what it is. I'd give OC a one-year deal for around a million and a half dollars, and I'd say, okay, come rush the passer when it's third and 12 or somebody is hurt and you could play. And I, that would be it. First of all, you're generous. A million and a half? A million and a half. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're getting veteran minimum. You're lucky you're on, you're on the team. <laughs> I mean, you, I was going to give him a million and a half. Paying the guy for one down. <laughs> I'll give him a million and a half. You know, I'm generous. Let's see. And maybe, all right, maybe you guys are the dicks. I'm not the dick anymore. <laughs> it's, 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 Hashtag it's pay OC. We put in. Oh, let's put an OC. Hashtag <laughs> pay OC. <laughs> yeah. First of all, who who who's hurt where OC has to come in? <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> not in Dominic and Sue, right? Everyone, everyone has to be hurt, and then it's just OC versus everyone. Carrie, Carrie, win be starting over OC. <laughs> I'd sign up for that. <laughs> all right, all right. Who wants to wrap up? Anyone have a rant that they want to go on? Go ahead, Tim. Uh, rant away, baby. Oh, uh, you know what? <laughs> I want to say, uh, well, first of all, the intro role, I'm torn on that. I, w- I want him back, you know, for a year or two. But if he wants he wants any money over a $3 million a year, screw you. The one thing he did say today, though, he's like, you know, no matter if I play somewhere else, you know, I once a giant, always a giant. And I keep hearing all this. Screw all this nostalgia crap. You go to a <laughs> – if you go to a rival – if you, you don't say you're once a giant, always a giant, go to Philly, go to Washington, go to Dallas. If you do any of that garbage, which they all do, the whole NFC East does that all the time, guess what? You're not a giant anymore. You, 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 lose, your, uh, you lose your credit at that point. Outside the division, fine. You go within the division, we have a problem. And, and roll going to Philly – Supposedly is a possibility. James, you got you got you got something on your on your on your mind. You wanna you wanna let it out. You wanna you wanna beat so your chest all the a little? people on social media saying that we cannot afford Nadamik and Sue. Please shut the fuck up. 
Sign him. Offer him $100 million. Go get him. He changes everything. The whole dynamic of the team, the franchise, the defense, everything changes. He makes everyone around him better. He makes us go from a question mark to the best defense in the division, hands down. Forget about the money. Don't worry about the cap. Let Reese worry about the cap and worry about if we're going to revamp this defense and invest in the next four years in Eli. We're making some moves on some contracts and bringing in Sue and bringing in McCourty and getting some fresh blood for Spagnolo and really looking to make a fucking run and kick some ass and get back what we deserve. Drive for five, baby. Let's go. I'm out. James, we, we can't afford Sue. Sex with chocolate. <laughs> Sex with chocolate. That's it. I'm done. That's it. I, I can't stand it. And I hope they blow me up or whatever. At Trifecta24 on Twitter. Kill me. I don't care. Sue, baby. Uh, hashtag Payos. <laughs> Oh yeah, if you, you want to follow me at T Merritt five one, T M E R R I T T five one. Go ahead if you want to talk shit, talk shit, please do so. And that's at trifecta hashtag pay OC and shut up about Sue. I love you guys. <laughs> I love you, Marco. All right, guys, I'm, I'm signing out, boys. All right, later. I have to find some like outro music. All right. Well, thanks for everyone for listening. Check out the website, www.bleedbigblue.com, and uh, just hit us up, all the social media outlets. Peace.